Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. It's our 200th show this week. And we're celebrating 500,000 subscribers. <laughs> wow. Well, oh. oh. in celebration of that, we're going to have a bumper edition of the GCN Tech Show. All our usual tech stuff, hot tech, snacks of the week, bike vault, your upgrades. And as a special main talking point, we're going to be looking at a bike designed to go over 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour for our 200th show. But before that, let's have a quick celebratory montage of best bits of how we've made it this far. Key montage. The bike fall queen is back. Let's go. We've got a big one here for you, Ollie, and that is one that I think has revolutionised. Because <laughs> you're saying you've got a big one. It's oh, just right. Like... Right, OK. I like that bit of music. Is it a bass guitar? I think it is, isn't it? Okay. Setting the tone, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just can't think of anything. How about Bike Vault Bike of the Year? Good idea. Thanks, suggestion boy. Yeah, Bike Vault Bike of the Year. They'll love that. Beyond exciting revelation of our new GCN Tech presenter. This? Yeah, we yeah. do that, yeah. Whoa. Steady. Steady. Steady right, now we've got that out of our system, let's take a look at last week's poll. So last week, Hank and I were let loose. You were uh, off on your holidays. Um, so we asked, should there be an industry standard bike and test method so we can compare all bikes on an equal method? 56% of people have said, yeah. Let's make life much easier. I think it'd be great. 22% of people said, no, leave the brands to do their thing. And 21% of people said, not bothered, either way around. Oh. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Not bothered. <laughs> not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, on to our main talking point this week. And we're looking at the land speed record for bicycles in a slipstream. Now, at the weekend, well, last weekend, I was actually at the Handmade Bicycle Show, uh, the Bespoke Show in Harrogate and I actually caught up with Andrew A.J. Jones, who is the builder of Moss Cycles and the man behind the Silver Eagle, a bike which we previously looked at that was aiming to do the land speed record. And since then, this bike has in fact been ridden into the Guinness World Record book by Neil Campbell, and he's now logged as the fastest male rider on a bike in a slipstream, clocked at 174 miles an hour, which is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. Insane, yeah. 174 miles an hour on a bike. Uh, the absolute record, we should point out, is actually held by Denise muller Koronek and is 184 miles an hour, but Neil is technically the fastest male. And they're looking to, well, break the absolute record in the future and possibly go 200 miles an hour. So to find out more about how the record attempt went, how the bike fared and what their plans are for the future and if they're going to modify the bike in order to break the absolute record, we chatted to AJ. I'm joined by Andrew Jones, the founder of Moss Cycles, who is the man responsible for building this, the Silver Eagle. Um, firstly, I need, I need to ask you, you know, how did you go about initially building a bike for this purpose that could go this, this fast? Um, Neil, the rider, mutual friend, uh, we rode the velodrome together. He said, I've got this friend who wants to break this record. He said, why didn't you come over to your house and we'll have a chat? And I was like, what? Anyway, over a cup of coffee, he was trying to explain to me about the fact that he was trying to break a record that um, stood for a long time, that Guy Martin had been involved with, with, the, with the British record. And um, it sort of went from there, really. It's, um, it's been quite an experience, yeah, absolutely. There's obviously going to be a lot of stress placed on the bike when it's going 70 to 200 miles an hour, you know, on the tyres and, and the frame and, and, and things. So how did you go about building it so that it would be safe for that and not fail? I think initially it's like we're going into a, a realm that not many people have been in, in terms of speed. So do we go with a, like a mountain bike type concept, which some of the people have done on the salt flats, that's kind of what they've used, and then beef that up? Or do we go, well, ultimately, if we want to break 200 miles an hour, why don't we just start with a motorbike? So at that point, as a frame builder, it's right, OK, so I'm not used to working motorbike parts. So we got a KTM junior motocross bike, 
And from there, we started to develop the spec of how the bike might look. Neil was quite experienced at going like 100 plus miles an hour, and he'd done that on a tandem. So the tandem gave a sense of, of, of the length of the bike and the stability that was needed. So that's why it's such a long wheelbase. Less, yes, because that's, that's pretty much what a tandem is. So on that basis, I had like the key reference points. So when you're custom building, you're taking measurements of, of the individual. You're looking about what the bike's got to do. This is new to me too. But if I've got the wheelbase to go off, I'm keen on making the head angle nice and slack because mm. we all know that that aids stability. And then one of the key things that I was keen on, which I'd looked at other iterations of building, which I thought kind of got it wrong. I was really interested in a low bottom bracket um, distance from the floor mm. for that low center of gravity. So with that as a starting point, I got, I got the CAD software out and we started playing around with those, with those points and started building from there. So how many designs and different iterations of the bike did you go through before you arrived at the, the final, final thing? So the time frame was very small. So Bespoke was a convenient time to launch. Bespoke in that year was in April and he came to me at the end of February. So I had literally weeks to come up with this. So to answer the question, this is the one and only bike. But there was a number of CAD model iterations that we went through to get to this point. The bike has evolved a bit because some of these bars here, this was open initially for the first runs. These didn't exist. So we've put these in extra because I'm constantly sort of concerned about, obviously I'm the frame builder and all the time this bike is getting a battering. Do you want to be strong? Yes. When we first saw this bike, it hadn't the record attempt hadn't been done. It's now been done, and incredibly, Neil went 174 miles per hour on this thing, which absolutely blows my mind. I mean, what what was it like doing the record attempt, and and, and you know what was Neil like riding it? Like how how did it go? Um, we tried compared to other other attempts to be um, more knowing. So, but there's only certain things that you can have control of and weather wasn't one of them. So the days leading up, the weather was awful. So we were supposed to be doing some baseline tests of the car. We've got a canopy on the back of the car. Let's find out what we know about that. So we had a number of days before the actual test run. Everything was going wrong. It's that classic story of overcoming adversity. We knew that if, um, basically, if we made the canopy small enough, the car could hit the top speed. So this is the fairing. The fairing on the back, we the call back the of the canopy. Porsche. Yes, the fairing. Make it small enough and the car will go fast enough. So the first runs, bearing in mind the weather was bad, the weather was clearing, we got him behind it, he wasn't happy. Um, because he wasn't getting he wasn't getting what he was normally getting. At low speeds, you can go nice luxury big canopy. I say luxury, it's, it's not luxury, but you know what I mean, a big canopy. And he can actually kind of get in behind it and it's fine. At his normal speeds, 100, 120, he's not getting the assist that, that, that we were hoping for, of like typically what he, down in behind it. But we said, we think from the work that we've done that you'll get a kick, you'll get a, you'll get a boost. And we think it's around about 150 miles an hour. And he's like, yeah, but I've got to get there first, you know? And you know, things aren't perfect. The day isn't going well. We're short of time. The straight line is actual events coming up. And we're trying to push him, push him, push him to get there. So, um, I think it was only on the actual run, if you like, the actual record run. And we, we, everything started to fall into place. The weather improved. Stars aligned. Stars aligned, air, air, wind direction, all those sort of things that were a bit of worry started to happen. On the actual record attempt, he hit like 144, one, one, heading towards 150. 150, approximately, he gets this kick. It's so sharp, he actually rams the bike into the back of the car. Now, what I mean car is actually a ram bar on the back of the car and there's actually a dent to prove it on the ram bar at the front, See, yeah, yeah. Where, where it's smacked in. And this so, is a big, thick steel tube. It, yes. And there's a big dent in that. Yeah. So we're, we're talking gone. about an acceleration, an instant acceleration at 150 miles an hour, up to whatever, because of this boost. And Neil is a very brave chap, and we know that. But what, <laughs> Clearly. But what actually happened then 
was like was the scare probably one of the scariest things that ever happened to him in his life. Because I mean, what? I mean, if you come off at that speed, yeah, it's nothing bad thinking about. Yeah, nothing bad thinking about. So, yeah, we broke the record, but it was it was right on the right and, on the and limit. It was just that thing of like it's amazing that he managed to hold it. Yes. Hitting that impact at 150 miles an hour and going on to accelerate yes. to 174. Yes. Kept back hold of the bike, got hold of everything, and then did a control stop, obviously, because now we're at the speed where we're seriously running out of runway. So we're, 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 so he's having to recover from that, and then come out of the car, the, the airstream, into the full speed of the air, and, and slow down. And that's why the bike has these huge motorbike brakes on it, because yeah. and, and the big tires, because it needs to stop like, in, a, in quite a short Absolute, space. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how sketchy is that? Because people, people probably just don't think about that problem you've got to solve. They probably just think about the, getting up to speed. At that point, that was probably the, you know, the every day. That's the, that's the serious bit. So, like I say, he's got that on top of the of what's just happened. We've experimented with parachutes, so we, we don't. We've thought about that. It hasn't necessarily been the best thing because it's so it's so aggressive, the parachute. Well, it could pull him off the back of the bike. Well, the, the parachute's actually fastened to, to the bike rather than the person. We didn't look at the person, but um, it's so violent the way that it kind of, kind of takes the bike out away from him. So it pulls the bike yeah, underneath it. Yeah, him. yeah. So, that, so we tested that and it, it, it wasn't ideal. So at the moment, Neil has the male record. Yeah. Uh, but the women's and record and the overall record is held by Denise uh, Muller. Denise Muller, yeah. Yeah, who went 184 miles an hour. So in terms of trying to break that or go 200 miles an hour, like you just said, what does what sort of changes will you do to the, to the bike and how you go about it? So we, we're very lucky that um, as the project's developed and I've, and a group of us have thought about the science behind what's going on. From, from you know our conversation here, now you can see there's a lot, lot of unknowns. So we brought in Harper Adams University, and they've got some master students that we've been working with over the last year or so to help look at certain aspects. So one of them is the aerodynamics, and what it is, it's the aerodynamics between the car, the canopy, and the bike, and we modelled that now. And we went with the KN. As, and it has been a superb, the Porsche Cayenne has been a superb vehicle. But we've realized that the height is an advantage, but also disadvantage because of the airflow underneath the car. We're getting all kinds of turbulent air that we, we don't need. But if we went to like a Porsche 911 type concept, then we've got to work the canopy up to a shape, the fairing at the back, and that creates problems. So the students did a brilliant job of hitting a sweet spot and saying, actually, the shape we probably need is probably an estate car. So that's really good. So that, that's a station wagon, if you're in America. A station wagon. <laughs> so, so with that, maybe we there's a synergy here. But maybe we need to look at where Neil rides on the bike. Perhaps we can get him a bit lower, bring everything down a little bit mm. to suit that. So the canopies match to him, and that's that's in a nice position for that shape of car. Right. So you need a faster state. We need a faster state, please. When are you doing the attempt? April. Right, would be would be would be good. If anyone's watching, he's, he's got an Audi RS6, or would that be good, or, or yeah. a Porsche Panamera Turbo. Get in contact. In the comments be part of history. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really useful. Yeah, but oh, brilliant, Mega. Thanks so much. Yeah, for, cheers, for telling guys. Us about the bike. And, yeah. Oh, really look forward to following the the progress and well, seeing if you can do 200 miles an hour. It'd be amazing. We're, we're, we're not giving up now. I tell you, we're, we're really up for it. Nice. So yeah, watch the space. Cheers, cheers man. Andrew. Cheers. That is absolutely insane. I love it. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, but AJ told me, um, it wasn't in the interview, that when uh, he got surged behind the Porsche and banged into it at 150 miles an hour, he, Neil was actually sick inside of his helmet, <laughs> but then <laughs> carried on and uh, broke the record. That is the sort of level of commitment I like <laughs> to see during a record attempt. It's just incredible. Yeah, it does seem... It seems crazy to think that a human on a bike could potentially surpass or, or break the record of 200 miles an hour. And I just don't know, do you think they can do it? I think, I think they can, but I think we should have a poll on it. So click down below and you can vote, do you think yes or no, uh, a human or these guys will be able to go 200 miles an hour? I really hope they can. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. 
Um, but if you'd like to see how they go and monitor their progress, then why not consider subscribing? as we're, we're hopefully going to be attending their next uh, record attempt. And you could help us get on our way to a million subscribers, if you haven't already. I'm really keen to find out how this progresses, and so much so, I might even consider subscribing myself. It's now time for Hot Tech, and kicking us off this week, we have some brand new saddles from renowned saddle manufacturer, Selly San Marco. It's called the Short Fit 2.0. It's an update, updated and revised version of the short fit saddle that was available previously. And it's available in four different levels. You have the Carbon FX at the top of the range, then you've got the racing, the dynamic, and then the sport. Yeah, they get progressively heavier as you go down the range, maybe with slightly less exotic materials, but the top of the range Carbon FX I've got here has a very nice carbon rail and a carbon sort of infused upper on it as well to make it very light. Just 185 grams oh, yeah, in they're, the size narrow. They're available in a couple of different widths as well. You've got the narrow, which is 140 millimeters, and the wide, which is 155. Slightly wider than the previous version, also five millimeters longer. And in addition to those four saddles I've just mentioned, there's two new saddles in the range. You've got Dynamic Comfort and then Racing Super Comfort. So the difference between these saddles are they've got a bit more of the, the bit more padding underneath the saddle, and also the racing super comfort saddle has got some special gel inserts to try and help keep you super comfy. Nice. Mm. And well, the Selly San Marco saddles fit within the Seller Italia ID match fitting range as well. So they, they are S3 and L3 for the narrow and wider saddles, respectively. Yeah. Nice, nice little cut out as well. Nice open fit. Do you enjoy like a cut out these days? I'm a big fan of a cut out saddle. Oh, yeah. yeah, quite like that. Next up, we have a new gravel bike from Villiers. The Villia Rave has finally officially been launched. You may remember we first saw it back at Eurobike in September, but if you didn't see that or need reminding, it's a high-end carbon fiber bike that's intended for racing and performance riding on both gravel and road. So the idea is that depending on how you spec it or how you set it up and the wheels that you put in, it can either be a race focused road bike or a gravel bike. I think it's a really cool approach to take and you've got a super versatile bike like you say that you can just mix and match components to suit different events or what whatever you fancy riding at the yeah, time. Yeah, it means whereas in the past you might have had to have had two bikes you could potentially just have one bike. Is it a true do-it-all? Well, Maybe, yeah. We'll see, but owing to owing to the way it's designed, Villiers is actually offering the bike in different spec builds, some that are road-focused with road group sets on them and road wheels and narrower tires, and then gravel-focused builds as well with sort of one-by setups and bigger tires and yeah. things like that. That's really cool to see, and they've also got some super cool paint schemes, haven't they? Yeah, the paint jobs are oh, very nice I love on that particular mm. bike. Next up in Hot Tech, Specialized have issued a safety recall on the brand new Tarmac SL7. The recall is related to the potential failure of the steer tube of the forks and is related to the design of the internal cable routing. It's said that owing to the design of the way the cables integrate through the headset and compression ring, that if the bike sustains a frontal impact such as I don't know, hitting a curb, crashing, or maybe jamming into a pothole, it could cause the steerer tube to actually crack. So Specialized have issued a stop ride notice on your bike, but the good news is you can simply head to your Specialized retailer and they'll replace the components free of charge. Yeah, the interesting thing here though is that this is a bike that will have passed rigorous safety standards. So, you know, fair play for you know, specialized for spotting a potential notice before something yeah. serious happens and then trying to do something about it. But it does raise the question that I wonder, like, are the current sort of safety standards that are tested on bikes, are they sufficient anymore? Well, it is an interesting point, and I think lots of manufacturers are really having to push the limits of what's possible on all of the different components, and as such, we're starting to come into a few issues like this, aren't we? Yeah, we've seen, it's not the first time we've seen, we've seen it no. on some of the bikes as well. Could I think be, that's a future talking point. Yeah, you beat me to it. I was going to say it could be a good main talking point. Hmm. Next up, is this the future of crank sets? Okay, so a company has been granted a patent in the US for a new kind of chain set, which it says is 4% more efficient than a standard chain set. The company's, called, yeah, look, the company's called Huron Cycling, and they claim that their spring action, spring-loaded cranks 
offer a significant performance benefit. And they say it's similar to the principle that you find in the carbon fiber inserts that are in the Nike running shoes that Kipchoge used to break the, the marathon record. Well, I've actually done a little bit of research onto their testing methods and as such, um, what are they saying? Well, what, so what they're saying, they've attached the bike onto a Tax Neo Smart Trainer, pedaled for 30 minutes on a, on a three degree slope and traveling at 19.3 kilometers an hour at a cadence of 71 RPM. It required 197.2 watts. And then they've repeated the test with these new cranks fitted with their fancy carbon springs. And then it only measured 187.8 watts. It's like 10 watts less to do Yeah, that's, they're saying that's to achieve the same speed. Yeah. Well, Which that is, is that's pretty bold. remarkable. Yeah, it's bold and very interesting. It's... I'm keen to see how it develops. Yes, it's well. That's measured at the free hub, and it's yes. interesting to see if that if that's you know accurate, and that's what's happening for a new um, product. I think that's quite a large, quite a large increase or reduction in power, and it's something that surprises me slightly. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how this develops, and if anyone significant adopts it and finds that they're getting a big gain, um, it will be great to see. But you can bet that if anyone does. The UCI will ban it quicker than you can say Lance Armstrong won seven tours de France. <sighs> They'll be straight on it, won't they? they? Will, yeah. yeah. Finally, in hot tech this week, we saw 60 cyclists generating all of the power required for the live music performances of Coldplay and Ed Sheeran at the Earthshot Prize live television programme. There's a lot going on there, I just said. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Incredible. So 60 cyclists were on indoor trainers and using generators so that the performances were solely powered by them. So in order to stop people hearing Ed Sheeran and Coldplay, all that was required was one of those individuals to stop cycling. Um, yeah, maybe. I would, although I would have hoped they'd have built in a bit of a safety buffer in case one person had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they weren't relying on everyone, like, don't slack off. They yeah. need the volume cranked up. I mean, there's two ways to look at this. Either it's a great kind of vision of, oh, the, you know, wow, look at all how green and efficient this concert was, yeah. or it's a sort of grim peek into the future of what our dystopian society is going to look like when we actually have human slaves powering the world. I mean, you've taken quite a turn for that. I was mostly <laughs> in my head thinking that it was just quite good. It's and like the Matrix. Interesting point which I read about this is Coldplay haven't um, toured since I think 2019 and say they weren't going to tour until they could make it um, more environmentally sustainable or at least balanced. Oh. Yeah. More hot tech next week. <laughs> It's now time for snacks of every other week. Oh, well, I've got something incredible have today. Um, well, I actually, actually went out and I've bought got... it. I bought this especially. Have you bought made We've stuff? got sent oh. something, oh. right? This, this is a letter from uh, June and Paul. They oh, say, probably. Dear Man on and Alex. <laughs> You've not been here for so long, people have stopped addressing things They've to you. They've forgotten who I am. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, they said they met you at the Thetford Gravel Race and they promised to send you a sample of their protein bar that they've made. They're completely different in every aspect uh, to the ones that Manon's made in her video. And they say that uh, to enjoy them to their full, chew them as long as possible, and that they contain oats, barley, rice, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, Bourneville powder, cocoa, cacao, uh, strawberry protein powder, peanut butter, because she owes everything in there. Wow. You're, definitely wow. Get, you're, getting your, you're getting your ten a day with one of these. There you go, they're Very in there. Good. Nice. I do remember these lovely people when we were at the gravel race. Um, they had, we had a great little conversation with them. And I'm intrigued to see what that sort of tastes like. I'm not sure at the moment. I like these ones are cut into small individual I'm not sure bits. at the moment I'm going to try the protein bar over a piece of cake in a little bit. I'm going to try a bit of protein bar. Oh, OK. Well, you look stronger already. You do look strong. My muscles are growing. Yeah. I can feel them. A lot of whole foods in there. Hmm. Well, thanks very much I'm for that. I'm doing what they say is chew it as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, you get chewing. Thanks very much for that. More snacks, not next week, the week after. What about Otherwise, that? Always getting trouble. I'm not eating that now. I'm saving it for my lunch. <laughs> Cha-ching! Now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit evidence for the upgrades you've made to your bikes, equipment, or cycling lives with a chance to win the ultimate prize. GCM water, water bottle. bottle. Ooh, right, I wasn't here last week. What do we have? Um, last week we had Sponge Cake Jake's NOS track build up against Pedal Dammit's titanium Facebook marketplace build. 
you're not going to believe this. 50-50, split decision. Dead split. Maybe we're going to have to take it to the UCI judges. No, we're not. It's the 200th show. You can both have a bottle. <laughs> Woo! Blow the budget. Oh, that's it. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave Wiggles the Caterpillar just there while we go through this week's upgrades. OK. So first up, Stal Force says, hey, guys. He submitted the Cutty Sark. No, no, I don't no. think it is the cutty side. Scroll down a bit like... more, there's the bike underneath. Oh, there right, there it is. <laughs> they say, found this nice looking bike on eBay, bought it, gave it a little refurbishment. New tyres, inner tubes, new brake pads, new brake lever, new oh, lights. Mate. Last gold but chain. not least, gold chain, COVID screen, fist bump. Um, <sighs> wow, this would be the ideal little commuter bike, I, I think suppose. It's a well, for a bargain, a bargain little runaround. Mm, I think it, it's cleaned up lovely. It has. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's smart, isn't it? A little dynamo on the front hub. Or oh. the front wheel, sorry. Um, maybe not a bike particularly optimised for speed and efficiency, but it will get you to where you're going just perfectly. The beautiful thing about bikes, Alex, is that they can be so many different things to so many different people. Never forget. Thanks. Well, it's not going to be easy, though, because we're up against C.R. Sandelli. And C.R. Sandelli was very lucky to get an absolute steal of a deal on this frame set and then set out to build his first electronic bike. Looked around on some uh, some auction sites and got a great deal on some used SRAM Red ETAP and then used a crank and got a quark power meter as well. Then put full Bontrager Triple X cockpit on there, a specialized saddle and topped it off with these really nice Hunt 35 aero disc wheels and oil slick spokes. I love um, oil slick spokes. Big fan of the prism paint job on that frame. It's very nice, isn't it? Yeah, I do like that. Quite like real glittery on it as well. Yeah, you go, I mean, yeah. As, as a sort of building it up with a steel of a frame set and to get a nice carbon bike, that's, you've done a cracking job. That's a really, really smart bike that I would say looks more than the sum of its parts. <laughs> yeah, you've caught me off guard with that, that phrase. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Well, anyway, it's not down to us. You decide which upgrade is best by voting on the poll. The link to the poll is in the description below. Yeah. And, um, I think, I think I know which way this one's going next week. Mm. Mm, okay. It's now time for the Bike Vault where you upload pictures of your bikes and Ollie and I judge them to be either nice or super nice. If they're super nice, I ring the bell. First up this week, this is Bolo and this is the most super nice bike from last week. Check this out, it's a beautiful tarmac. SL7. Oh. I wonder if it's been recalled. Hopefully it's Hopefully had the Hopefully rectified done. the potential issue in the steerer. <laughs> yeah. um, I like the paint job on this one. Yes. It's very cool, the sort of monochromatic thing going on there. And I like that it's so clean and neat with this one by SRAM, SRAM Force. Uh, it's, it's just it's very good. Yeah. SRAM Red, isn't it, that one? Well, there you go. Everyone voted for it, so fair play. Nice yes. one. Right, first up this week, we have got a submission from Mayor B. Big fan of the show with their specialised Dolce. In the new forest, no less. Yeah, short and scenic route, apparently. Very well presented bike in a yeah. lovely rural location. Aligned, oh, rear tyre valve, not aligned. Oh, uh, minimal accessories though. Yes. We've got cranks nearly aligned. I think it's in Biggie Smalls. <sighs> what are we saying, Alex? What are we saying? I don't want to start on a negative this week. It's the 200th show. It's the 200th show. I'm feeling generous and I know Mayor B is a big fan. Yeah, yeah okay. Right, super, super nice. nice. Whee. Uh, next up we've got Fabz. <laughs> and, and he's got his Merida. Here it is. Oh, yeah, like that. What are these in the background? Geese? Um, they are, they're Canadian geese. Look at all those chickens. Yeah, in the background. <laughs> Gnawing away at that field. <laughs> yeah. Just tucking it. Right, valves, valves are aligned. That field does look very tasty, doesn't it? I mean, <laughs> it looks they lovely. are. Not one of them's got their head up. They're all just. What I would like to point out also is that the yum, yum. angle of the saddle almost perfectly mimics the horizon behind it. Yes. Um, I'm trying to see how, how it's actually stood up this bike. Oh, it's against Shadow a... stand, maybe. No, I think is it's it a curb? pedal. I think it's up against like a kind of curb edge. I think that's a super nice. Yeah. 200 show, you know, we're not going to be harsh. That's super nice, isn't it? Super nice. Uh, Next up, we've got... H. Wittin, 1967. 1967. With, um, with, with a Parley Chewbacco. Ooh. Cool, uh, cool gravel bike, the Chewbacco. It's been around a while. It must it be the perspective the first of, of how this picture's taken, but the wheels look massive compared to the bike. Maybe it's, just Maybe a, small it's a smaller bike. frame. Yeah. Um, I've, I've 
Parley do are quite good at doing custom paint jobs and custom options. So I've not seen one in this red before, but it's a very nice bold red. I, I quite yeah. like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, we're not in Biggie Smalls, but and we've we're got in one water bottle. One water bottle. But I think oh, I'm, yeah, like it's quite say, a jaunty angle as well. Like you say, though, I think it's a super nice bike, isn't it? Super nice car. Oh, this guy today. Super nice. Next, um, Daniel Dot Free says he's got soaking wet, but a lovely ride through the northern German countryside. And this is a Canyon Grizzle. A Canyon Grizzle. CF SLX8, and it's one by. Wow, and it's got 650B wheels in it. Those tyres look great, don't they? Oh, yeah. Do you know what? I've not seen a Canyon Grizzle, and it's got Eckhart. Yeah. Campagnolo, Eckhart. So, size got a Grizzle. Do you know what? I think it's really cool. And people are going to go, yeah, but it's got all the bottles and, and stuff on it. But it's that's dirty. that's what it's specifically for. Gravel bikes. Mm, gravel that's bike. The gravel bike dispensation. Yeah. They're allowed. The special gravel bike dispensation. Yeah. Super nice. That cassette's very clean, though, isn't it? Yeah, I do love a clean cassette, so extra mm. points for that, if I could award points. Um, and last up this week, we've got Edo Sel Sedler, who's got his Scott RCE20. What I do mean, you make that of that? definitely nice. Is that a sort of like real brown leather saddle, or is it just the sunlight hitting it? I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. Cranks are the wrong way round. Chain is incredibly clean, so maybe that can counteract the cranks being wrong. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, something that's, that's that's triggering me a little bit is the way in which the bike isn't properly centred in the frame of the photo. Yeah, but we could we could just we could crop that a little bit out. Yes, because that you know way what? we can award it a super nice. I think it's a super. It's nice. the two hundred show. Yes. I don't give a damn. It's having a super nice. <laughs> oh. That's it for the special edition 200 Tech Show. Hope you really enjoyed it, and certainly for me, I think it's the first week ever we've had super nice all round. A clean sweep. A clean sweep. That'll never happen again. No, well, unless we reach a million subscribers. <laughs> so we know what to do. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the show. If you have, let us know in the comments section down below. And well, we'll both be back next week, won't we? See ya.